Acts chapter 8, verses 29 through 39 reads as follows. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Esaias and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I accept some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and like a lamb dumb before his shearer. So opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And a eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? Of himself or some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. Amen. Amen. Uh, Just for a little while uh, today, uh, we want to speak to you on the subject, On Your Way Rejoicing. Amen. On Your Way Rejoicing. Every time I, I, I go to a baptism, and I know we all do the same thing, I think about uh, when I had to be baptized. And like I said, uh, when we did it, it was a little different. Amen. Uh, tonight you have your baptismal fonts and pools that be inside, and, and we're going to take care of that part. Even you can have the heated water that's coming next, children. But when we had to be baptized, uh, some of us here know that it wasn't in a pool or a baptismal font. Some of us went down by this river down this way behind the levee in the Mississippi River. Uh, some of us were baptized a little late, right there on Lakeland Road. And we went in there, it wasn't a thing where you didn't have to worry about the conditions. Uh, a lot of times the old people used to say, well, pray over the water. Pray for baptismal strength. Pray for courage. And I always remembered, it was a thing when I went down into the water, the deacons always used to go down with their white poles, and sticks and white poles and white handkerchiefs on it. And they would go down and mark a location in the water where they were going to take you. And they made sure when they took you, it wasn't where you could stand up and no water would hit you. They would take you all the way down when the water was up to your neck. And they would mark where they would put you. And when they would go down there, they would always be singing songs of praise and, and glory and, and worship. And I always remember there was a thing I always had about spiders. And I hated to see spiders in water. And I always remember my mama telling me, pray to the Lord to give you strength. Pray to the Lord to give you strength. And I remember my sisters, they went down before I did because my older sister went and my middle sister went and they took me last. They took us in all we were born. And when I went down into the water, I was wondering how deep they were going to take us. And the deacons came and grabbed me by the arms and walked me down into the lake. And the preacher was waiting for me. And he turned me to the crowd and he started speaking to the crowd. And so I'm standing in the water. All the grass and everything all around. And I look down in the water. And what do I see? A little spider swimming in the water. But the last thing I remember... Uh, was Reverend Cena Jones saying, don't worry about it, God is in the water. Yeah. There's no danger in the water. Oh, yeah. And when I looked up, the next thing I know, he said, in the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, and I was under. When I came back up, the sun was shining in my face, 
Water was dripping down my face just like my little sister this morning. And when I looked around in the water for the spider, the spider was gone. And so I know that God has a way of doing things. And so when we look at this and we see how God has set up and structured that, He'll make it possible for us to receive Jesus Christ. No matter where we are, no matter what we're doing, He'll make it arrangements specifically for us to receive Jesus Christ. And so we look here, it's not just something that this story is telling us. When this eunuch was driving, he was on the road coming back from Jerusalem. And he was going back to meet up with Queen Candace, who was his queen. Tells us that this man was not just any ordinary man. And on this road, it tells us he was in a desert. Now, understand, whenever you're in a desert, there is no water just laying around. A desert is a dry wilderness place. But it tells of a story how the Holy Spirit led Philip to this unit. And so what we want to do this morning, we read the scripture, but there's one word that we want to focus on this morning. And I saw that on the expression on, on Alexis's face when she came up out of the wall. It's an expression we had on all of our faces when she went down and when she came up. We had the same expression and the same emotion. That one word that we're talking about this morning is rejoicing. You notice that was the last thing that was written in verse 39. It said, after the eunuch had been baptized, after he had talked to Philip, Philip just disappeared and went on his way. But the eunuch said, went on his way rejoicing. What does that word rejoicing mean? In today's terminology, rejoicing means joy, it means triumph, it means elation, it means satisfaction, it means delight, it means glee. Y'all, y'all seen the show Glee on television, yeah? Y'all haven't seen that? When the children and the students are singing and happy all the time. That is what there was experienced and what the day's terminology would say that that eunuch experienced. But look what the word rejoicing means in the Greek terminology. This is what it means in this context. Rejoicing means to be cheerful. It means calmly happy. It means well off. Listen to how the Word of God has put it. Cheerful, calmly happy, and well off. In other words, after the Word had been explained correctly to the eunuch, and after he had been baptized, that eunuch went from being sad about not knowing what and who the Scriptures were talking about to smiling because he knew what and who Isaiah was talking about. When he was reading the book of Isaiah, he was reading where Jesus was about to be crucified, and he was wondering who it was Isaiah was writing about. He thought Isaiah was writing about himself, but Philip told him he was not writing about himself. He was writing about one who would come, who would give his life for us all. That eunuch went from being agitated and confused because of his ignorance about who Jesus was to being calmly, abundantly content because he had been introduced to Jesus. Notice, when Philip came up to him, he was sitting there scratching his head. It's like a lot of times we would say in school, he was reading the verses, but to him, it was like literally Greek. He didn't understand it. He was baffled. He was wanting to understand who was the prophet writing about. Long comes Philip. And Philip opens up the scriptures to him and reveals that the one that Isaiah was talking about and prophesying about was Jesus. Then he goes on to tell him who Jesus was and how Jesus came and how he died, but how he was raised from the dead, and now he sits at God's right hand, interceding for us all. The eunuch went from being a wealthy servant in Queen Candace's court to being a worthy servant in King Jesus' kingdom. How do we know he was wealthy? Because the Bible says in the writing, it says he was a servant of Queen Candace. But notice what he said. He was riding in a chariot. Everybody didn't have chariots back in the day. Whenever you had a chariot, that meant that you were ordained in some high order. Some high order that was written and designed. Look at this. This eunuch went from being Queen Candace's servant to being Jesus' servant. You notice there was a difference. He went from having a person where he had to go and answer and respond to what she would say and not knowing how she would respond when he got, went back to, to meet up with her. She was going to have a, a report. She said, give me a report of what happened in Jerusalem. 
She may not have been happy, but he knew he was going back home, and when he was going back home, he was going back with John. Yes, yes. Notice what he said. Calmly, happy. Y'all, y'all know what that means? In the midst of everything that's going around, you ever been just so relaxed and happy because situations in your life were going on in your life that may not have been going the way you wanted them to, but then all of a sudden the answer came. And you didn't have to worry about it anymore. And people come and they look at you and say, it's something about you. Why is it that you just seem so relaxed, so so calm? Because all the things that were bothering me, they've been washed away. Literally washed away. Now we look at this word rejoicing. And and we said we were going to look at it. Let's walk and look at that word letter by letter. This is what the Lord has given to us this morning. To understand why not only the eunuch, but every baptized believer in Jesus Christ is able to go on their way rejoicing. Think back to what happened when you were baptized. You all did it. Y'all remember what it was like when you went down in the water and you came up out of the water? There was a difference in your life. There was a joy in your life. Remember I said when I came up out of the water, the first thing I saw was the sunshine in my face? And it made me think about what God said about His Son. He said, this is my beloved Son in whom I will please. It's as if God is looking down, smiling on the fact that you have received Jesus Christ. There's a reason why the eunuch went away rejoicing. There's a reason why you came up out of the water rejoicing. And there's a reason why you should still be rejoicing today. The all means, the relationship that had been lost in Eden, has been restored. Yeah. You know what it's like when you've left home for a long time, you haven't seen your family, and you're wondering if they're still going to feel the same way about you, but the minute you hit the door, everybody just said, welcome home. Yeah. Yeah. Baby, I'm glad to see you. Come on, sit down for a while. Talk to me. Tell me what your trip was like. That's is what this means that first off, we were lost. We couldn't find ourselves. We had lost our relationship with God, but now, because we received Jesus and were baptized, we got it back again. The E means you've been elected into the Lord's eternal kingdom. You see all of these politicians doing everything they can to try to get elected today, trying to become president, trying to become senators. But God is saying, when you receive Jesus Christ, when you go down into the water, you know what it's like? It's the same as if you went to the voting booth and elected a candidate. That's what God has done. That's what Jesus has done. When you accept Him, God says, now you've been elected. And you've elected to serve me, and you're elected as my child. The J in the word rejoicing means Jesus' joy fills your soul. Y'all know what it was like. When you got baptized, and sometimes you went back to school, and you saw your friends, they said, it's something different about you. What happened to you? And you just want to tell everybody, Sunday. You got baptized. Sunday. What is I went down into the water. They dipped me down into the water and I came up. I've been baptized in Jesus Christ. Jesus joy. The old means the old you has been buried. Your new you has risen. All those things in your life that you did before that impacted you before, God took them down into the water grave. He got rid of That's why we dip you down. The down means you're being buried. All those things that you had before have been buried. When you come up, that means you're coming up new. All that old stuff, all those old things have been washed away. You got a brand new life, a brand new opportunity. The eye means you have inherited the right to the tree of life. Remember those old folks always would say that? They would get up and tell the determination. They say, I'm glad that I've inherited the right to the tree of life. Because remember when God put man out of Eden? You know what he said, didn't you? He said we could not go to the tree of life. He said we couldn't touch it. But when we receive Jesus Christ, now we can go back. And we can actually go and feed and eat at the tree of life. The sea in rejoicing means this. Christ is now your confidant. That means you can go to Him for aid. You can go to Him for comfort. You can go to Him for inspiration. You can go to Him for instruction. Anything that you need now. Jesus says he'll give it to you. When mom and dad and other folks can't do it for you, Jesus said, I'll do it for you. What they can't do, I will do. You can come 
to me. You can talk to me about anything. The other I means this. You have immutable insurance coverage. That simply means God remains the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. He's not going to change on you. If He said He's going to watch over you, He's going to watch over you. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. The end means you have a new walk. You have a new talk. You have a new life. I always remember my daddy said that when we were going back and I was getting dressed and, and he was putting my suit on and everything. And he put my tie on me and we were getting ready to walk out. He said, you know something? Let it look like you're walking a little tall. Uh, I wasn't but nine years old. But he said, it looked like you're walking a little tall. And I always remember it was like when I first got my glasses when I had a woman, I put them on, I was walking down, my, down the street. Daddy said, why are you walking with your steps so high? Because when you first put glasses on, it make you feel like you're taller than you really are. So you, you're stepping up higher than you normally step. And that's the same way I felt after being baptized. Yes. Yes. That's why they say you got a new walk, you got a new talk. Things are not the same no more. Yes. Yes. Then the G means this. God's goodness and His grace will go with you to guide you and to guard you every day. Yes. That's why David said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That's why he said, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God said, whoever tries to mess with you, that's my child. Y'all know what it's like. Mothers know what this is like. My mama was like this. I know mothers are like this. Mess with a mama's child. If you want to fight, like they say, if you want to see a fight, mess with a mother hen. If you want to mess with somebody to see a fight, mess with a mother's child. Yeah. Uh, I know there's certain, a certain thing about especially uh, black ladies. They always make this statement. Not my baby. <laughs> oh, you're not going to mess with my baby. Yeah. That's my child. Yeah. That's the same way God talks. Yeah. When you become his again, when you believe in Jesus, you've been baptized and received, God says, oh, yeah. That's my baby. That's why Jesus said it'd be better that a meal's gonna be cast around your neck than you to touch one of my children. Yes, so as we leave you in closing this morning, after you get acquainted with Jesus, yeah. after you accept Jesus, after you align with Jesus, after you get baptized as your open acclamation of believing it and receiving Jesus as the Son of God, as the, the sacrifice for sin and the source of salvation. After you've done all of these things, when you've done all these things, you shall be on your way rejoicing. It's simple as that. You shall be on your way rejoicing. If anybody asks you why are you so happy? Why are things so good? Or why does things seem so good when trouble is all around? How can you rejoice? I rejoice because I have Jesus. I rejoice because I know who I have in Jesus. Because Jesus said, He's a friend of mine. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He said, even when mom and dad leave me and forsake me, He said, I'll be there to take care of When everybody else is gone, Jesus says this. I know the little children are going to know this. I'll be there. It wasn't Michael that said that. It wasn't Michael Jackson that started that. Jesus is the one who said, don't worry. I'll be there. Whenever you need me, I'll be there. Amen. 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 Alexa. On your way, rejoice. Be happy. Amen. Amen. Everybody, you're on your way, rejoice. Be happy. Don't worry because you know you have Jesus. And what did the songwriter say? And what did the timbers dance to the other Sunday? As long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. Amen.